Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Benson. I'm a clinical assistant professor of obstetrics and gynecology at Northwestern University in the Feinberg School of Medicine, located here in Chicago, Illinois. Today I'd like to talk to you briefly about my research on amniotic fluid embolism. AFE is one of the leading causes of maternal death in the developed countries around the world and particularly in the United States. I'm going to talk briefly about the symptoms, my patients with AFE, a traditional view of AFE, new hypotheses concerning the mechanism of disease for amniotic fluid embolism, the research findings that have been published, and the financial support and collaboration that have made this research possible. I'll conclude by directing you to a website where you can find more information. So what is amniotic fluid embolism? It's an illness of pregnancy that's both sudden and unpredictable. The diagnosis is made by one of four symptoms. Cardiac arrest or a rise in pulse or a drop in blood pressure. The second one is difficulty breathing, and this can actually mean just completely stop breathing or a respiratory arrest. The failure of the blood to clot properly, leading to maternal hemorrhage. And then finally, neurological symptoms, which include coma and or seizures. Now the diagnosis is made by having any one of these symptoms or combination of these symptoms in the absence of other obvious explanations for why the patient might be having these symptoms. It can occur though in the presence of other illnesses and diseases and often does so. Amniotic fluid embolism kills approximately 100 women per year in the United States. However, it also injures hundreds more and kills or injures their newborn babies. My first patient occurred during my residency in obstetrics and gynecology at Northwestern University here at Prentice Women's Hospital. The patient delivered and within minutes suddenly stopped breathing. She bled profusely and that was because her blood would not clot. She survived, but she received 108 units of blood products. And for perspective on this, uh, a typical adult has only 10 to 12 uh, blood products that are actually what are called packed red blood cells. So she received many times her total volume of blood uh, just to survive. And this is not that unusual, uh, whether people survive or die from AFE, frequently they get massive blood transfusions. Now my second patient occurred in the first few years in private practice. She, uh, this was just a few years later, she collapsed at home. She arrived at the hospital and got an emergency cesarean section with minutes of her arrival. Even so, her baby developed cerebral palsy. She too bled profusely after surgery and she required a massive blood transfusion also. Now, these cases and a third case that was more mild uh, made me question the traditional understanding of amniotic fluid embolism. The traditional understanding is that fetal material in the amniotic fluid leaks into the maternal circulation, travels to the lungs, and causes a physical blockage of the small pulmonary blood vessels. However, this didn't make as much sense to me because of several inconsistencies that were common in amniotic fluid embolism but not seen in other types of involved events. Most typically, the fact that many amniotic fluid embolism patients had thinning of the blood and hemorrhage for that reason, this was not typically seen in uh, more traditional, more well understood embolisms where blood clots simply travel to other parts of the body. Now in thinking about the disease, uh, I thought of another research hypothesis that it possibly was an allergic reaction to the fetus. And the first allergic reaction that came to mind is anaphylaxis. Uh, some people may be familiar with this uh, when they hear of people getting suddenly sick from a bee sting or having an allergic reaction to peanuts. This is an anaphylactic reaction. Anaphylaxis was the first immune response to come to mind because it's sudden, it can be massive, and it can actually result in death within minutes. And this is what happens if people die from peanut allergies or bee stings. Now, the problem with anaphylaxis for this hypothesis was, as we started collecting early data, it was becoming clear that there was no evidence for anaphylaxis. 
So our group thought about this some more and came up with an alternative immune response that might make mothers sick during labor, and that is complement activation. Complement is a series of immune molecules that is separate uh, from anaphylaxis and can also result in allergic or immune responses and results in human disease. Now we were able to get nine patients with AFE tested, seven from Japan and two from the United States. In the nine patients that we were able to test, we found no evidence of anaphylaxis, but we did find 100% of the patients, that is eight out of eight, uh, with AFE had massive activation of the complement pathway, and that I will show on our next slide. This is a slide adapted from one of the tables that was published in the medical literature uh, by our group. And these bars are uh, complement the, the what's called C3, one of the complement molecules, and these bars are C4, another complement molecule. The white bars are, tw are the averages of 22 healthy controls. These were uh, laboring patients who had no problems during labor. And the gray bars are the uh, eight patients who had a the averages of the eight patients who had amniotic fluid embolism. This, these dotted lines here and here are the normal, the lower limits of normal for this, uh, the amount of this protein in the blood. And as you can see, the healthy patients, the white bars, had their complement levels well above the normal levels. But the sick patients, the ones with amniotic fluid embolism, had complement levels that were quite lower than uh, the lower limit of normal. So this is why we, this is the first evidence that complement may be involved in amniotic fluid embolism. Now this work continues. Uh, we made more discoveries. The first and most important possibly is that the complement system is activated in normal uh, births. In other studies we found that uh, complement levels drop even in healthy patients. They stay within the normal range, but they drop a little bit, and this drop occurs really at the moment of birth. Now this corresponds to other work by other researchers looking at the start of labor. Other, the current theory about the start of labor is that rather than being related to some change in the mother's hormone levels, it's really more related to some change in her immune system and the fact that complement is activated at the moment of birth supports this more general notion. Unfortunately, nobody has a very specific idea yet of why labor starts when it does. Now, another thing that we found was that complement activation and leakage of fetal antigen is probably not responsible for shaking rigors during labor. And finally, we also found that fetal material leaking into the internal circulation may not cause life-threatening uh, blood clotting. And this is a photomicrograph uh, taken from one of our studies. This is actually a maternal vein with, filled with fetal skin cells. And what we found in a series of almost 60 uh, hysterectomy uh, specimens, these were hysterectomies done because the patients were having life-threatening bleeding. Fetal material was sometimes in the maternal blood vessels and sometimes not but there was not a one-to-one -one correspondence between whether the mother had amniotic fluid embolism or blood clotting problems and whether the fetal material was there. So this is one more mystery of the causes of amniotic fluid embolism. When I was younger, I believed I would discover the molecular mechanism of amniotic fluid embolism in my lifetime. However, as I've done more research and gained more experience, I've come to develop a great deal of respect for the complexity of biological systems in general and the mechanism of amniotic fluid embolism in particular. Now I would just be happy if I can make a contribution one step at a time. I would like to thank the financial supporters of the, this research without whom none of this work would have been possible. The first is North Shore University Research Institute in Evanston, Illinois, and then the Marvin and Kate Wigman Foundation. I'd also like to thank my colleagues and collaborators who've provided both uh, effort and emotional support over the years, and that would be Drs. Richard Silver, Michael Kaufman, and Robert Goldschmidt, all of North Shore University Health System in Evanston, Illinois. I would also like to extend thanks to Dr. Hadakazu Oi of the Nara Medical University in Karashira, Japan, 
and Hiroshi Kobayashi of the Hamamatsu University Medical School in Hamamatsu, Japan. And then finally, I would like to thank Jennifer Beaumont of the Feinberg School of Medicine at Northwestern University here in Chicago, Illinois. For more information about amniotic fluid embolism, or if you would like to make a donation to help support research on the disease, please visit our website at afefund.com. And I would like to thank you again for your interest in this rare and deadly disease of pregnancy. Thank you.